Shalom, everyone. We're back, and this is part three of today's Shabbat study. We are going to be doing um, a one chapter of Eub, the book of Job, and I believe we are at chapter four. So this is going to be an interesting chapter here, very interesting, in my opinion. So I'll be reading from the Septuagint here from my Word application on my computer, the Word Bible program. I'll be reading from the Breton's English Septuagint here. And let's see here. Uh, where is it here? Bishop's Bible, Complete Apostles Bible. LXXE. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to go to the book of Job here. And let me just see here. Here we go. Job chapter 4. Here we go. It says, then Eliphaz the Tamanite answered and said, You have been often spoken to in distress, but who shall endure the force of your words? So who shall be able to endure, you know, your rebuking in a way? You know, he's saying, you know, you've been, you've been harsh yourself towards others when others have been in distress. For where have you have instructed many and have strengthened the hands of the weak ones? So now with now Eliphaz is commending him because he's um, giving words of encouragement to others and have supported the failing words and have imparted courage to feeble knees. Yet now pain has come upon you and touched you and you are troubled. Is not your fear in folly, your expectation also in mischief of your way? Remember then who has perished being pure. Or when were the true hearted utterly destroyed? Meaning when has the righteous, the blameless in Yahoo and Yahusha's eyes, when have they been cut off with a short expectancy? So this guy's trying to, you know, build you up. You know, he's trying to he's trying to tell Job, you know, why are you so worried? Why why is your fear and folly? Why have you lost expectation? Okay. Accordingly, as I have seen men plowing barren places, they that sow them will reap sorrows for themselves. Meaning, don't envy, you know, when you see the wicked, you know, uh, looking promising and they, they looking like they're flourishing. At the end, they're going to reap what they sow. Essentially, that's what he's saying there. They shall perish by the command of Yahuwah. And shall be utterly consumed by the breath of his wrath. Whoa. The strength of the lion and the voice of the lioness and the exulting cry of serpents are quenched. Interesting. Huh. The old lion has perished for want of food, and the lion's whelps have forsaken one another. Okay, so let me just move this down here. But if there had been any truth in your words, none of these evils would have befallen you. Shall not mine ear receive excellent? Now, this is where I believe something's happening here. In the Masoretic text, it will talk about a evil form came before him. So let's, let's switch to the Masoretic text here and show you what I'm talking about. Let's see here. Um, the fear of your confidence ever perished in the innocent as I've been. Now, here we go. Verse 12. Now a thing was secretly brought to me. Uh-oh. This is never good. A thing was secretly brought to me. Yeah, Yahushua doesn't operate in the secret. So who, who brought a secret thing to Eliphaz? And my ear received a little thereof in thoughts from the visions of the night. Now, just a reminder... Not Yahuwah is not the only one that can give you a vision. Just, just reminding you that when deep sleep falls on men, fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before my eyes. There was silence, and I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal men... Be more righteous than Alua? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Mm. Behold, he put no trust in his servants and his angels. 
he charges with folly. Now, what I like about the Septuagint, it's a little bit more stronger here. It says, whereas he trusts not in his servants, he preserves perverseness in his angels. Okay, so what angel does Yahuwah have that he would perceive perverseness in? You know, so I believe this is Satan talking here. This is the spirit that's that talked to Aliphaz. But them that dwell in houses of clay, of whom we also, we also, who is he talking about? Obviously, Satan's an angel. We also are formed of the same clay. He smites them like a moth. And from morning to evening, they no longer exist. They have perished because they cannot help themselves. For he blows upon them. They are withered. They have perished for lack of wisdom. Now, this is a great chapter if you really want to see Satan's character being exposed, how he truly is. He is always the, the accuser. He falsely accuses us. And this is what I see from this chapter is... Uh, he is falsely accusing Job, saying, you know, if you, sp if you spoke truthfully, this would have never happened to you. Basically, if you didn't sin, um, Yahuwah wouldn't have done this to you, even though in reality, we know from the start of the book of Job that Satan is the one doing it to him. So, and it just shows here, what I find interesting is that Satan says we are made of the same clay. So, you know... I don't have any other proof other in scripture that humans and angels would have been made both in the image of Yahuwah, a.k.a. they would have made be made after the likeness of Yahushua Messiah. Um, it makes sense. It makes sense, though, because Yahushua himself says that in the resurrection, we will be like the angels. You know, everything's going to be restored. So it's very interesting. Even Satan can give you a little bit of truth, but then he'll give you all these lies mixed in with it so even though he's spitting you know some truth to job right now he's falsely accusing job of sinning and he's making he's trying to basically kick job when he's down put salt in his wound that's basically what he's trying to do uh, um it's a very interesting chapter um brother dennis do you have anything to add yeah maybe a little bit uh Man was made in the image of Yahusha. Angels were not, actually. Now, they can appear as men, but as we know, there are different, different types of messengers or angels. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, when they were created, and I, I, don't see, I don't see how they would be created out of clay because they're not physical. We were created mm -hmm. out of clay because we're physical. So uh, it's just... Just some thoughts there. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The whole clay thing. Yeah, that could be true. Um, yeah, it's kind of tricky because we don't really get any uh, literature about how they were created, how how the stars, the angels were created. Um, you know, so the uh, it's kind of interesting that we don't really get told, like, basically what they're made of. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, but I think that's all I have to add. Um, I don't know if anyone else has anything to add from the chapter. Um, Shushana, Marissa. Um, all right, well... Well, thank, thank you for joining us. Um, hopefully you got something out of this chapter. Again, uh, I think the biggest thing to bring out is uh, be careful who you get visions from, especially our fellow brothers and sisters out here. This is what I kind of got from this chapter, too, is that uh, Yahuwah and Yahushua are not the only ones that can give you visions and dream dreams, you know. Um, so be careful what spirit is appearing to you and be very careful. Um, because it could be Satan, it could be one of his fallen Malachim giving you a false vision, a false prophecy. So just just be careful out there. Um, I just want to thank everyone for joining us today, and hopefully you got something out of it. Hopefully this message was a Baraka, and uh, hope to see you guys soon. For all of our brothers and sisters out there, 
Um, have a great rest of your Sabbath. Shalom. All right.